chocolate is made especially for kids. With kid-sized portions, a yummy milky centre and the taste that kids love. Kinder Chocolate, made for kids. There's more than a thousand Labbrokes cash-in news agents right throughout Australia. Just press find a store on your cash-in page and deposit your way with Labbrokes. Somewhere over the rainbow Skies are blue And the dreams that you dare to dream Really do come true Dream, plan, book. Expedia. Your somewhere starts here. 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Good morning, I'm Brooke Corty. AM Agenda with Kieran is coming up next. First, though, the top stories this morning. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has planted a tree at the residence of the Australian Ambassador to the United States in Washington following his bilateral meeting with the US President Barack Obama at the White House. The discussions in the Oval Office focused on global security, trade and strategic issues facing the Asia-Pacific region, as well as Islamic State, of course. Mr Obama expressed immense gratitude attitude for the strong and steadfast US-Australia alliance at the start of that meeting. The Queensland Premier will lead crisis talks today in Townsville. 237 sacked workers are there. They're calling for Clive Palmer to quit politics after his nickel refinery went into voluntary administration. Sideline staff are saying the Palmer United Party leader is unfit to hold public office. He has failed to take responsibility for what is now a fiasco. The Premier and six of her ministers are discussing ways to reboot the local economy and redeploy affected workers. She's calling for the company to to give sacked workers their redundancy payouts, something yet to be confirmed. Islamic State has now confirmed Jihadi John is dead following reports he was killed in a drone strike in Raqqa in November last year. Born Mohammed M. Wazi, he was known as the executioner of the jihadist group, appearing masked in a string of videos which showed the beheadings of Western hostages. Islamic State confirmed his death in an online magazine. The US military had said at the time that it was reasonably certain he'd been killed in the strike. Another cut to global growth forecasts by the International Monetary Fund signals 2016 as a year of great challenges for global policymakers. The IMF now says the global economy will expand 3.4% this year. That's sliced 0.2% uh, off the recent forecast just three months ago. It is still an expansion on 2015 though. Uh, it's little comfort to strained global markets worrying about the future, particularly of China. The IMF has identified China as a potential flashpoint for the economy and something that could derail the world economy if not handled successfully by policymakers. Three Tennis Australia board members have resigned as a corruption scandal grips the sport. Former players Karen Pratt and Janet Young have quit along with businessman Peter Armstrong. Their reason for leaving remains confidential. It comes though as a coalition of professional sports, including tennis, call for new federal laws to stop match fixing and corruption. The weather, showers and thunderstorms over the west and the south with a cooler change for the southern coastline and along the east coast today, expected to be dry and warm. Live, this is AM Agenda with Kieran Gilbert. Good to have you with us this Wednesday. Coming up in the next half an hour, we're going to take you live to Washington, D.C. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull to hold a, a news conference shortly. He's currently at the Ambassador's residence. Kim Beasley in his final days as Ambassador before Joe Hockey takes over that role. We'll be hearing from Malcolm Turnbull soon. It comes after, just a few hours after, in fact, the talks at the Oval Office with President Obama. There was no sign of any tension over the fact that Australia did not uh, agree to boost our military contribution to the fight against IS in the wake of the recent request by US Defence Secretary Ash Carter. He was President Obama thanking Australia and Mr Turnbull as Prime Minister for the troop contribution. Welcome has had an opportunity to travel to some key hotspots uh, over the last several days, uh, including 
Afghanistan and, and uh, Iraq. And those are just two places where we see the value of uh, uh, Australia's armed forces and uh, the uh, remarkable contribution that they have made and the sacrifices that they make consistently. Uh, keep in mind that uh, in our fight against ISIL, uh, Australia is the second largest contributor of troops on the ground after the United States. Uh, they have been a consistent and extraordinarily effective uh, member of the coalition uh, that has helped to uh, deliver an opportunity for the Afghan people to govern themselves. So the U.S. president there reminding uh, me members of the media there and uh, through them, the American and Australian people, that Australia is the second largest contributor in the fight against IS. They might not be of like mind about the need for Australia to do more, as the U.S. had requested in December of last year. However, they are of like mind when it comes to the strategy to combat and defeat IS. Here was Mr Turnbull. We have to constantly lift our game uh, in the way we engage with and tackle uh, these extremists, particularly ISIL, but there are many others, uh, as they operate in the cybersphere. Uh, archaic and barbaric though they may be, uh, the use, regrettably, of the internet is, is very sophisticated. And so I'm pleased that we're going to be working on even closer collaboration there. Specifically, the battle against IS, understandably, featured prominently uh, in those opening remarks and the, the broader issue of global security, as did the shared commitment to the alliance, a long-standing alliance, the pillar of Australia's security. Here was Malcolm Turnbull on that issue. Uh, Barack, you've been very hospitable and, and generous uh, in inviting me to Washington uh, this, this month and uh, your agencies have been very open. We've had uh, uh, very productive discussions with the Defence Secretary, Ash Carter, together. We went to Arlington and uh, paid our respects to the, to, on the tomb of the unknown soldier and recalled the comradeship over a hundred years of Australians and Americans fighting side by side in freedom's cause. Uh, you're quite right. Our alliance, our relationship is founded not just on national self-interest, uh, not just on economics or kinship, but on shared values. We're going to go live now to Washington. Stan Grant, our international editor, joins us on the phone. He's at the ambassador's residence in the uh, suburbs of Washington. Uh, Stan, give us the latest. The rapport looked quite good there. Uh, we are expecting, or had been expecting, a news conference. Is that going to go ahead shortly? Not likely. We are waiting for a briefing. We're told that'll be a background briefing from the Prime Minister. No cameras allowed, but I'll be able to bring you... The details of that briefing will be next speak in about half an hour from now, which is waiting on the Prime Minister to arrive. I can bring you some more details, Kieran, though, about the meeting itself at the White House. It ran longer than expected, about two and a half hours. That included the dinner. The Prime Minister and the President had 15 minutes together uh, separately before moving in for the lunch. John Kerry, the Secretary of State, was also in attendance, along with a range of other guests for that lunch. It was a wide-ranging discussion, I was told, that covered many of the things that we've, we've talked about so far. Um, security, the fight against the Islamic State, the issues surrounding the rise of China and the challenges in the South Pacific Sea, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, trade more broadly, the global economic outlook, a very, very big and wide-ranging conversation. Interestingly, um, Prime Minister Turnbull is going to, perhaps even as we speak, a phone call from Hillary Clinton. Uh, of course, she's the Democratic uh, in the running to become the Democratic nominee for uh, president. The presidential election unfolding this year in the United States. We understand that that will be a phone call before he comes into the briefing itself. So we'll be able to bring you more details about that and about the, the, the conversation with the president will be next week. Yeah, thank you, Stan. Just quickly before I, I let you go, because you do have to get into uh, that briefing with the PM, and if you do have to go, uh, please just let us know. But j just yep. in terms of the overall uh, visit, it's been a brief one, but from afar, it looks like the, uh, the Prime Minister and co would be quite pleased with the way things have gone, particularly in the context of the fact that Ash Carter had made that request for more troops uh, late last year, which Australia didn't agree to. So there was that, uh, that element that could have been a 
a, a bit of a problem. Yeah, it's been very, very carefully massaged, this whole issue of the troop request. Um, we saw the, saw the Prime Minister clarifying that while he was in Iraq and Afghanistan, saying it was a much broader request to all the international community, not directed at Australia specifically. Australia did say no. I put that to the ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Australia, John Berry, yesterday. He's here also in Washington. Uh, and he said, look, it wasn't a request for troops per se. It was a request for support. So they're, they're very much passing their words around that issue to take some of the, the, the perceived tension out of it. But no doubt going forward, just what the commitment is from the international community, what the requirements and requests will be from Australia are still to be played out. This battle against Islamic State is not going to be won in months. It will be won in years, if it is won at all. We've been fighting now uh, the war on terror, as it's more broadly called, in Afghanistan and Iraq and mm. other parts of the world for more than a decade. So there are still so many questions yet to be answered about that. Interestingly, I will say, uh, Kieran, that most reports I'm getting of the meeting is that, that the President and the Prime Minister developed uh, a good rapport, comfortable with, with each other. I was told by one person... Um, uh, it, within the, the Prime Minister's team that it was an improvement even on the relationship that they had developed in Manila last year at APEC. That was in different circumstances. They were just getting to know each other. But this was described as a better meeting than that. OK, Stan, thank you for that uh, update. Some interesting uh, developments there. And no doubt we'll have more after that, uh, that briefing at the uh, Ambassador's residence shortly. We'll chat to you soon, a bit later in the program. For now, though, a quick break. Back in just a moment with Josh Frydenberg, the Resources Minister. Labbro's cash-in news agents right throughout Australia. Just press find a store on your cash-in page and deposit your way with Labbro's. I knew real life insurance was right for me after the first call. I'm now confident that if something happens to me, my family's financial future is protected. You can apply for real family life cover quickly and easily over the phone without a medical or blood test. Good afternoon. Real Insurance, Lorel speaking. How can I help you? Hi, Lorel. My name's Julian. I'm calling to get a quick quote for life insurance. With Real Family Life Cover, you can choose the cash benefit your family will receive, up to $1 million if you were to pass away. Great. I've used your online life insurance calculator and I think $300,000 would work for my family. Perfect. I just need your age and smoking status. I'm 36 and I'm a non-smoker. For a $300,000 benefit, your premium would be just $7.39 a week. That's less than I thought. Plus, just for choosing real insurance, after the first 12 months, we'll give you back 10% of the premiums you've paid in that time. I like the sound of that. Don't put life insurance off any longer. Call 1300 303 459 or search Real Life Insurance. At Hotels Combined, we compare the top travel sites. For free. That's right. And we guarantee to find you the best deal. Finding a great hotel deal is easy with Hotels Combined. Too easy. Check out Hotels Combined. Today. The first time ever I saw People around the world trust Dakin to feel right at home. Dakin, the best air anywhere. Pimples, zits, blemishes, always ruining your complexion. Here's a solution from Proactive to help you get clear and stay clear. It's our incredible three-step system. Proactive just makes my life so much better. To have clear skin is a miracle. Order today and get Proactive delivered to your door. And when you order, you'll receive over $50 in free extras. There's no hassle with Proactive. It's quick, it's easy, and it obviously works. Call now, 1-300-557-337. Voted best value by Cruise Critic. Evergreen's 15 day European river cruise from only 3965. Plus, new France and Portugal river cruising now available. Hurry, call your Evergreen expert today. Can't lose from here. There it is! The curse! Money! Oh, they took me like five! Cash out with Sportsbet and get out of your bed early! Cash out with Sportsbet! 
This is AIM Agenda. With me now, a uh, member of the Turnbull Cabinet, Resources Minister Josh Frydenberg. Josh Frydenberg, thanks very much for your time. I want to ask you a bit about the US relations, particularly in the fight against IS and uh, a few other mm. developments on that front, uh, the, the view on China and so on. First of all, though, I'm interested in your opinion piece you wrote earlier in the week regarding the resources sector. Despite the mm. downturn, despite the slide in, in prices, you still believe the outlook is largely positive. Why do you have that view, given uh, what we've seen over the last months and, and in fact, years now? Well, Kieran, we are in the third um, stage of what has been a commodity super cycle. The first stage was the prices boom, where massive demand for commodities out of China led to a spike in prices, $180 a tonne for iron ore, $140 a barrel for oil. The second stage was the investment stage where companies responded to the high prices by investing in new production capacity uh, and we saw Australia being a direct beneficiary out of that with $400 billion worth of investment between 2003 and 2014. And now we're in the third stage which is the production stage where all that production is coming on stream and iron ore and, and coal volumes from Australia have doubled and tripled. Over, over recent years. Now that has put downward pressure on prices and it will take some time for demand to catch up with this increase in supply. But why I am optimistic is because the broader dynamic, the fundamentals of the global economy are still in the favour of commodities and namely increasing in urbanisation, increases in population growth and increases in the global middle class. All but of as which you are know, right it, but as you know, there's a, a rebalancing on our doorstep, particularly in China, our biggest trading partner, moving from uh, its phase of, uh, of construction and, uh, and cheap labour and, and manufacturing to a, a consumption phase, which um, is, you, you would think is much more uh, suited to our services sector, like tourism. Uh, so for China, What's your view on that specifically? Well, you're right. China is slowing down uh, from double-digit economic growth to around 7%. But what was in interesting was that in December, uh, the iron ore shipments to, to China were a record. And one of the reasons for that is that they are increasing their export of steel that they manufacture domestically from the iron ore that we sell to them to non-China uh, countries, namely ASEAN and India and other countries in the region. So India right now has about a quarter of the global average of steel consumption per capita. They haven't gone through the urbanisation uh, and the development that China has, but the, under the Modi government they're very intent on following that path. So other opportunities in the region, particularly in ASEAN countries and particularly in India, will hopefully uh, meet the hole that has been left by the slowdown in China. The IMF has reviewed downwards, revised down the growth mm. forecast globally for the third time in 12 months. One of the reasons is the slide in commodity prices. Uh, yes. They also point to the rebalance in China, also the rising interest rates in the United States. So their outlook is not as bright as, as you're suggesting this morning. Well, actually, if you look at the IMF outlook and the numbers, they're still very strong. Uh, 2016 growth on these uh, revised figures is 3.4% above 2015. Uh, 2017 growth is 3.6%, Kieran. That's very strong, both in emerging economies as well as in developed economies. Uh, we have to understand that uh, we have gone through this super cycle where China has gone through a level of industrialisation that we haven't seen around the world for over a century. Now, of course, it's going to come back to normalise patterns of demand and the Australian resources sector will have to respond to that. But the Australian economy more broadly is very diverse, uh, while other economies that are resource dependent like Brazil, like Canada, were technically in recession last year with consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. Australia continued to grow strongly and in 2015 we had the strongest job growth since 2006 with 300,000 well, new jobs. Well as, as the Minister for Northern Australia I guess tourism is something that you would be yeah. uh, very much cognizant of as well.
well and the fact that the Chinese market's gone from, um, I think it was five or six years ago, 350,000 in, inbound tourists to now one million. Uh, and this is on the basis of a, a nation where only around 6% of the population have a passport. So the, the growth prospects on, in that front are enormous. Absolutely, you're right. A million Chinese visitors is a great uh, support and, and boom for our uh, tourism industry and the lower Australian dollar uh, obviously helps our tourism sector uh, considerably and as well as more people go into the Indian middle class uh, they'll also be looking to travel to Australia as well so we're yeah. very upbeat okay. about the tourism prospects. Let's look at uh, some other issues. The pre-selection dramas, the Australian saying that Turnbull's been warned of a pre-selection civil war. Is it really that bad? And uh, I want to ask you about some of the ridiculous developments, really, the likes of Angus Taylor, for example, uh, a star uh, in the Liberal Party, certainly a future minister, if not higher, uh, in terms of his trajectory. How could he even be mentioned in terms of someone who's going to be challenged? Well, you're right, Angus Taylor, Craig Kelly, there are a whole lot of uh, really good members that have been mentioned as being people who are under challenge. And I really hope um, that doesn't occur because uh, they have already made significant contributions in the parliament and will continue to do so. But as you know, in the Liberal Party... But you look as bad uh, as Labor, don't you? You look as bad as Labor with this factional <laughs> stuff. It looks, it looks pretty petty, doesn't it? Look, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't look good at the moment, but... This is because uh, these pre-selections have taken place very late uh, due to the redistribution in New South Wales. Uh, the Prime Minister's made it clear he supports uh, all the sitting members. Uh, I'm hoping these issues will be resolved. But as somebody who once challenged Should the sitting member, Kieran, I, I realise that it can be quite a sobering experience as well. Mr Turnbull did as well, Peter King uh, in, yes. in Wentworth all those years back, but should he intervene now to, to protect some of these members that you referred to? Look, I'll leave those matters to the Federal Director, the Federal President and the Prime Minister to work through. The uh, former Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, apparently uh, still has ambition to return to the top, top job, being urged by his former Chief of Staff to do so. This is according to the Daily Telegraph this morning. Is that possible? Look, I don't, I don't know what Tony Abbott's going to do. He hasn't confided in me. Um, these are decisions for him and his family. Uh, no doubt uh, he, will be take, he would have discussed those issues over the break and we'll hear more from him shortly, I assume. But any chance he could return to the top job? I do, look, I don't think that's going to happen. I think uh, Malcolm Turnbull has made a very, very strong start. Uh, he has the full support of his team and we're looking forward to winning an election this year. And, uh, and serving under a, Ma a Turnbull government well into the future. Should Abbott be a minister? Should he be returned to the ministry at least? <laughs> well, yeah, those, those issues are well beyond my pay grade because uh, uh, the much Prime beyond. Minister You're in the alone. Cabinet. <laughs> yeah, but the Cabinet doesn't choose the ministry. Uh, that would be a slightly uh, self-serving me mechanism. But uh, look, uh, I think the, the Prime Minister has made it very clear that Tony Abbott's not coming back to the Cabinet anytime soon. All right, let's uh, look at US, the US relations now. There, do you think that Abbott would have, the former Prime Minister, would have committed to more troops at the uh, request of Ash Carter, the Defence Secretary, Mr Turnbull, Maurice Payne and your government now saying no? Uh, would Tony Abbott have given a different answer with Kevin Andrews as Defence Minister? Certainly sounds like they would have uh, with the language from Mr Andrews. Look, that's a hypothetical that uh, I don't even think is worth discussing. Malcolm Turnbull's made it very clear that the, uh, the request from the US was very broad-based. It went to 40 nations uh, and that Australia is already the second largest uh, uh, contributor uh, of our um, military personnel in the fight against ISIL. And this was mentioned very warmly by President Obama in his opening comments in the Oval Office. So I think Australia is doing absolutely the right thing by being a leader in the field, tackling uh, ISIL. And uh, I think that's been warmly received by the Americans. Now, Mr Turnbull spoke very positively about the alliance and support for it. He did make some... Uh 
different changes in tone that have been noticed by a number of analysts. Uh, on China, for example, he says we're not going to choose between our security ally and our biggest trading partner. Um, he, he seems to be moderating the message on a lot of these fronts and saying that on economic ties that the China relations should be, should be managed and we need sober heads all round. Do you, what do you make of his change in tone on a few of these different relationships? Well, I think Malcolm Turnbull uh, firmly understands the, the Chinese dynamic and how important uh, China is uh, to the Australian economy, but also it is to, to regional stability. And China has a role to play there. And the Prime Minister has made that clear in, in previous comments on national security issues like the South China Sea and elsewhere. So I think we look for um, partnership with the Chinese uh, as opposed to enmity. Uh, and we have a very strong relationship at many levels, people to people levels, cultural links, of course economic links, but also at the poli political and the strategic level. And I don't think it's a choice between our relationship with China and our alliance with the United States. The final question I want to ask you is an interesting thing that uh, emerged just in the last half hour when I spoke to our international editor, Stan Grant. He said that uh, Hillary Clinton would be having a phone mm. conversation with Malcolm Turnbull. That's, uh, that's a, a bit of an, a, a, quirk, uh, a quirky development, isn't it, given uh, this is the Democratic, uh, one of the primary candidates for the Democratic Party, when the Liberals traditionally are aligned to the Republicans. What do you make of that? Well, I think everyone understands that Hillary Clinton is the front runner for the Democratic nomination and stands a very good chance of getting the presidency. Who knows how it will play out? But uh, it's certainly in Australia's interest that our Prime Minister has a very good relationship with, uh, with Hillary Clinton. So I think that phone call will be very helpful for Australia. Why well, uh, has he well speak to Donald future. Trump? Well, I, I don't know if he's tried or Donald Trump uh, has has tried to, to reach out to our Prime Minister, but I'm sure in due course, as the Republican uh, primaries move along, uh, there'll be plenty of contact between uh, the, uh, the presumptive candidates for the Republicans and our uh, national leadership in Australia. Mr Frydenberg, uh, Resources Minister, appreciate it. Chat to you soon. Great to be with you, Karen. A quick break. Back in just a moment on AIM Agenda. Lab Bro's cash in news agents right throughout Australia. Just press find a store on your cash in page and deposit your way with Lab Bro's. Booking a hotel? Hotels Combined has the best selection of offers and deals all in one place. Simply search, select your options, and find a great hotel deal on every device. Compare with the bear at Hotels Combined. Pimples, zits, blemishes, always ruining your complexion. Here's a solution from Proactive to help you get clear and stay clear. It's our incredible three-step system. Proactive just makes my life so much better. To have clear skin is a miracle. Order today and get Proactive delivered to your door. And when you order, you'll receive over $50 in free extras. There's no hassle with Proactive. It's quick, it's easy, and it obviously works. Call now, 1-300-557-337. adult-sized world, kids need things that are made just for them. Kinder Chocolate is made especially for kids. With kid-sized portions, a yummy milky centre and the taste that kids love. Kinder Chocolate made for kids. What's one word three million Australians think of for insurance? Allianz Insurance, how can I help? Allianz, protecting three million Australians this summer because it matters. The first Dakin.
to feel right at home. Dakin, the best air anywhere. Voted best value by Cruise Critic. Evergreen's 15-day European river cruise from only 3965. Plus, new France and Portugal river cruising now available. Hurry, call your Evergreen expert today. Could removing these plastic microbees have already grabbed the good news headlines for 2016? And if wind can power the equivalent of 8 million homes in the UK, why can't we do the same here when Smart Money returns live on Sky News Money? Anytime, anywhere, Sky News follows our leaders wherever they go. From our federal home of democracy. This is the future. Around the nation, across the globe. Keep watching Sky, everybody. Australians can rely on Sky News Live. Breaking news for 20 years. Of life on Mars. The world has lost one of the most versatile actors of the screen and stage. Alan Rickman was 69. Gunfire and more explosions. Jakarta's city center under attack. Raids carried out as police try and track down all those linked to these attacks. The Prime Minister stopping off in Iraq and Afghanistan on his way to the United States. Thank you very much for your service, your professionalism, your commitment. You really do us proud. Breaking news. For 20 years, this is Sky News Live, Australia's news channel. Live, this is AM Agenda with Kieran Gilbert. Nine in Canberra, six in Perth. This is AM Agenda, our top stories. Trade, Islamic State and the strength of the US-Australia alliance. On the agenda, with Prime Minister Turnbull and President Obama holding talks in the Oval Office. It is simply not acceptable for Queensland Nicol and Mr Palmer not to be upfront, open and transparent with the workers that they have employed. The Queensland Premier to lead crisis talks with sacked refinery workers in Townsville today as they call for Clive Palmer to quit politics. The so-called Islamic State confirms the death of Jihadi John, the infamous terrorist who beheaded British and American hostages. The International Monetary Fund labels 2016 as...